Great. Well, thank you so much, Leslie. Um, I am Jessica Cristo. I'm the Associate Dean of Student Success. Um, and with me is our program specialist, Bettina Valle. Uh, we oversee Project Match um, at the district. And so, as you know, the Project Match has been around for a very, very long time. And it used to be out of the office, I believe, of diversity. Um, but in the past almost four years now, it has moved over to the Office of Student Success, which is where I'm at and where Bettina is. Go ahead, Bettina, we could go to the next screen. Some of this stuff I feel like y'all know because I'm speaking to insiders here. So uh, this is the purpose of Project Match. Uh, just so you guys know, we have had a lot of uh, classified staff go through uh, Project Match as well as people who had been um, what they used to call those CGCA roles, I forget what they call them now, but like those interns, you know, those graduate students, they get to apply too. And so we have a lot of people with background knowledge uh, for the district of the district, which I think is really good. Um, when we get to the components of the application, we'll talk about how that will come into play, right? Your knowledge, your background, your understanding of our students um, and of our district and the campuses. Uh, so this is the purpose of Project Match. It is to diversify the applicant pool in which we pull from uh, in the Los Angeles area to find folks who really do want to become faculty as part of our district and provide them the mentorship uh, so they could get that type of experience. And also I think it helps them make the decision if this is what they wanna do. Okay. All right. So here is the eligibility uh, breakdown and this is really important. So um, if you have questions at the end, we can go back to these slides. I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly so we could have more of a conversation since there's not too many of us here. Um, one of the big things for eligibility is that you have no prior higher ed teaching experience. So if you've had K through 12, no worries. Uh, but this is being the, what we call the instructor on record, right? So especially those of you who work in like um, admissions and attendance and trick, you know, like there's that teacher on the record who's gonna submit the grades. If you've ever been one of those, then you're not eligible for Project Match. That's the easiest way to say it. Um, that you hold the minimum teaching requirements. And I will put this link in the chat and you guys might actually probably have it handy around your office. It's the, I'm gonna hold it up here, let me see. It's a little different now, let's see if you guys, you guys see that book? Kind of, sort of. Okay, this is the minimum qualifications for faculty administrators in California community colleges. It's a little handbook. It's probably sitting around with someone in academic senate, <laughs> probably has that, your HR people have that. And I'm actually gonna put the site uh, is it? Yes, I'm going to put the site right now in the chat. Just give me a second. So this explains the minimum quals for the disciplines. And every couple of years, the state updates it. It does. Oh, thank you. It's already up there. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, every couple of years, the state updates it. It gets a little tricky when it comes to, let's say, the career tech uh, areas, because that is also years of experience. I always say if you're not too sure please apply to Project Match. Don't let that from stop, stop you. And in your letter of interest, talk about your experiences and talk about your educational background um, and what you would like to teach. Now you wanna make sure, and um, trying to, I'm thinking of some examples here because Bettina and I, we read all these applications and sometimes they go as much as 500 applications. So you wanna make sure that you meet eligibility and then that's what you write in your letter. So for example, and I really feel like I'm speaking to insiders here, especially because my friend Leslie is here so I could speak insider talk. So sometimes we get some applications that talk all about math. Love math. I wanna teach math. I do great things in math. You've never seen a better math teacher than me. Please pick me for Project Match. Like, okay, great. The person won't meet minimum calls to teach math. And so then the letter is all about math. Now they may, because they have a master's degree, they meet some minimum calls to teach other things, but their whole thing was about something else. And so our advice is make sure that you meet the minimum calls for what you desire to teach, right? Same thing happens in other departments too, right? So people have, let's say an extensive background, especially in the K through 12, 
in a certain discipline, but they don't meet minimum quals for us at the community college level to teach that discipline. So you really wanna take time through the handbook. We actually have an example that's gonna come up in a minute of how to read it. It's like, it's like ordering a value meal. It's like combinations of things sometimes will let you teach things that you didn't even think you could, especially when you factor in your bachelor's degree and your master's degree. Some folks have two masters, some people have two bachelors. So the combinations um, get a little tricky, but of course, talk about what you really wanna do and just make sure that you have uh, the degree to match that discipline. That's the most important thing. Um, at this time, since Project Match is a mentorship program, we don't offer equivalency. So I'm sure you guys know about equivalency. So some people ask for equivalency, like I have all this history doing math, please you know, accept my degree to you know, be a math instructor. That happens once there's a real teaching position. And once um, we actually have an equivalency coordinator and they deal with that at the campus level because hiring is at the campus level, not at the district level. So we can't offer equivalency, but we could definitely answer some questions about that. So these are some FAQs we have on the side. I think um, I answered them. If you are in school right now, but you'll be done with your graduate degree uh, before the fall. So this would be fall 2022, then still apply. The main thing is that you meet qualifications before you walk through the door. That's how we say it. So please still apply. Okay, Bettina. Minimum calls. So this one, I'm gonna, this is a computer science one and you, you're gonna read it first from top to bottom. So for example, you have a master's in computer science, then you can do teach computer science or bachelor's in above computer science or computer engineering. And then you go down master's in mathematics. So you have to take your time reading because you're going to go up, then you're going to go down. And so you really want to make sure that you take your time with this. Um, and being that you're on a campus, I would definitely ask a department chair. Um, I would ask somebody in uh, academic senate um, in case you're not sure. Okay, Bettina. So I'm gonna do this slide, but Bettina, please jump in. Submitting a complete application. You guys know how our district is. You gotta submit a complete application online. There is no handing in a paper one like old school days. It has to be online. And then you know how our system is with submitting things online. So sometimes you can, and this goes, this is for teaching positions and I think it's for staff positions as well. You start uploading all your stuff and then you hit submit and then you're like, oh, I think I forgot something. And then you try to go in and like get back in there and add it. You're not gonna be able to get back in there and add it. You're gonna have to apply again. Now on our end, we'll be able to match the names and be like, okay, this person submitted two because this one's a full, uh, complete application. This one obviously was missing things. No worries. We'll look at the complete one. But if you're in doubt and we actually cannot go back and look for you, which is true when you're applying to teaching positions, um, it is radio silent. There is no one to check for you if you've turned in a complete application. So if you're ever in doubt, just resubmit. Now, incomplete applications will not be reviewed. And I have to say, unfortunately, we do receive a lot of incomplete applications. I always feel like just like college, this is like the first weeding out process, right? Who can submit a complete application? Who can submit everything that's asked for? Um, so you definitely wanna resubmit in case you need to make edits. Um, again, only done through our system. You can find the project match application in um, our district website. Just like if you were searching for jobs, project match comes up to the left-hand side and the application is there. And you would just, and you probably all have logins already, but it's creating, you know, the login, the password, which is a little difficult for folks not used to our system. Um, upload all your transcripts that you have. So for example, like I have one class that I went to a community college for, and then my college used the community college class to help me graduate, right? So I had enough credits. You still have to upload that like community college transcript. And then that would be true if you were applying for a faculty position as well. 
because that's how I ended up having to do it. They made me go back and get my community college transcript. And I thought, you don't need it. It was one class. And like, no, we need it if you want to work here. So I had to go back and get it. So that is true. They were nice enough to tell me afterwards. But uh, if you've taken classes someplace, just go ahead and upload that unofficial transcript. We will ask for official transcripts from everyone um, who does get accepted because we need those for our records. Bettina, do you want to add anything to this? I do just um, very quickly about the application. It, the project match application is separate from the classified jobs application. Okay. So when you're selecting your application to look for project match, you have to make sure that you go into the academic job site and create a, a new profile there if you already had one under the classified because it's two oh. separate systems. Okay, thank you. And I'm putting the link right now into the chat. So that's the link to get straight to Project Match. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Okay, we could go to the next one. Okay. So the way the review process goes is once um, the deadline comes and the deadline is March 11th. So once March 11th hits, um, then we start looking at the applications and we first, you know, obviously take out all the incomplete applications and then a group of people, the committee review the applications. And then from there, a select group uh, move on to an interview process. Once the interview process is complete, then the group meets again, we have a rubric, they are scored just like uh, faculty positions. And then a certain number will be invited to participate in Project Match. Uh, folks usually ask the number. So sometimes, I mean, the highest I've seen out of applicants was like close to 500. We've been going down since then, which makes sense to me. I think the last time we did it, we were a little close to 300 with a cohort size between 40 and 45 participants. So it is pretty competitive. Uh, Project Match has always been competitive. This year, and I'll go into, we have a slide about what the process is going to look like due to some people still being remote, uh, with the majority of classes still in, uh, in a remote setting, so we'll talk about that. A um, couple of the FAQs there, can you email missing documents? No. Will someone tell me if I'm missing documents? No. And of course, you guys know all this because I'm sure many of you have told people no for a lot of these things. Um, can I receive feedback on my application or the interview process once it's over? Unfortunately, no. Uh, even after the group has been selected, people ask us, well, you know, did I mess up or what was it? A lot of it was, is it's competitive, but also um, a lot of folks don't meet minimum calls for what they talked about or what they desire, or they don't meet minimum calls at all for the community college and they didn't know that. So a lot of times the answer is no, just based on qualifications, eligibility. Um, can you reapply if not accepted? Yes, you can reapply. Okay, Bettina. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go, program requirements. I should drink some water, hold on. All right, so first blanket statement. We, two years ago, so for the 2020 cohort, uh, we had to move everything to online because they were gonna start, uh, in July, there's a summer institute and we meet on Saturdays in person. Unfortunately, we couldn't do that, obviously of July, 2020. So we moved everything online. Uh, that stayed the same in 2021 and what I've been told from the district that will stay the same now for 2022. So it's gonna be online. So I'm gonna go into the specifics of what does that mean? Cause online, obviously there's so many fancy ways to be online in different ways. So the first part, there's gonna be a May kickoff if you're accepted and it's like a get to know ya, icebreaker type of thing where there'll be a uh, faculty um, and you'll get, uh, we'll actually get started on some work. That's in May, that'll be online synchronous live online sessions. July, live online uh, synchronous sessions. And then after the July Summer Institute, there are monthly, once, once a month in the fall, we will meet live in the evening. 
Uh, there will be assignments. Again, there, the Summer Institute does have assignments uh, throughout the project match sessions, and you'll be submitting those in a canvas. You guys will be in a canvas shell. Uh, part of this online work that you'll be doing before fall 2022 would be completing uh, the introduction to Canvas and the online teaching and learning online certification classes. So some of you may already be certified online. And if so, when we get to this piece, um, Bettina will verify that for you so you don't have to take it. But if you haven't taken it, <laughs> we have you take that because the mentor that you have will likely be in some type of hybrid modality or will be online uh, fully, either asynchronous or synchronously. And so we need to make sure that you are certified for online teaching. In November, we also have a mock interview. So we practice interview questions. We actually go through, um, I think a really good process to get you familiar with how interviews are conducted for faculty, including the teaching demonstration, which a lot of people have obviously had to do online, uh, which you will get via the certification classes. And then working with us within the Canvas, you'll see both the student role and the teacher role in the Canvas. Um, we ask that you fully participate in all the components and if accepted, you'll get a list of the components and all the dates and all the times. Uh, just so you know, July happens in, on Saturdays and the sessions in the fall happen Thursday evenings. Uh, I don't think that's changed. I just have to check with my partner. It's both myself and then uh, we have another faculty member from Pierce College who helps facilitate the Summer Institute and the fall ses sessions, which really focus on pedagogical student-centered teaching strategies um, and culturally responsive teaching and learning. So we have guest speakers and we have a lot of things happening, but I will be there with you guys. I'm also a faculty member as well as an administrator. So I've done both. And so I think it's, it's really nice to have uh, folks who are doing it, who are teaching, not like outsiders coming in. And let's see, you are considered an LACCD volunteer. So even though you do work for our district, I believe you're going to fill out parts of the volunteer packet and Bettina would be working with you on that because some of these things you already have on file, i.e. your COVID vaccinations are already on file, your TB test is on file. So uh, depending on the dates of those, and we all had to update our TB tests and stuff. So uh, you should be good to go, but Bettina would be working with you on that. Uh, the FAQ on the side, sorry, the trash trucks out there, <laughs> is do you, if you need accommodations, once um, you are invited to an interview, if you need accommodations starting at that point, yes, we can provide them. If you cannot make all the sessions, you would let us know, but um, that is part of your agreement. So usually people, if they're going to be absent, it's maybe like one time. Um, the volunteer packet, like I said, has the TB test, the COVID the fingerprinting, everything that we do to work here, which you guys already have. Um, and then there are two stipends of $400 each, and that's given in October and then again in December when the mentorship ends. So the mentorship starts, uh, the program starts in July, but the mentorship component is for the fall semester. Okay. You want to add anything, Bettina? No, you got everything in there. Okay. So then... <laughs> so the mentorship component, um, our faculty mem mentors do apply to be part of Project Match, and then they are paired based on discipline. Uh, faculty mentors are committed for having to have a positive experience with you. Um, it is a volunteer status. Uh, that's really important, especially for folks outside our district, that they understand that with LACCD, you're a volunteer, you're not part-time faculty, you're not, you know, um, already considered an employee. Um, you will have access to the canvas of the course that you're being a men mentee in, and it will be a limited access. Um, so you won't be able to, let's say, have a conversation with a student offline or email them directly, but you're able to see everything uh, that's going on in the classroom. And then you'll, because you'll have your own, what they call the sandbox of canvas, you'll be able to create lessons and so forth, show them to your faculty uh, mentor, and then they publish it for you. And you'll work with students in that way. Um, so again, mentors do get the same stipend you do. So they're invested as well. <laughs> and they have to submit a lot of paperwork in order to get that. We're, we're still giving them out now, like we're still hounding down um, our faculty. 
Uh, can you select your own faculty member? If there is a faculty member that you'd like to work with, you should ask them to apply to Project Match. Um, and everybody receives through the district, they email the application to all faculty, both part-time and full-time. So everyone would see it. They just got to open it and do the steps to apply. And it's online. It's pretty easy. Um, how many hours a week will I be in the classroom? So even though it's in the online environment, it is at minimum a three hour commitment in the fall. So you can imagine that if you were going on campus, it would be you know, two 90 minute classes. So in this way with the minimum three hours, it could be that you are in the online class for one day and the other day you're working with your faculty member, but you guys have a three hour a week. Um, time frame to do the mentorship components. A lot of that mentorship component includes them assisting you with uh, cover letters, with resumes, with teaching strategies, with them explaining to you, you know, how does one do the grading? You know, it's not what you feel, which I used to think that's how it went, but no, it's like, this looks like an A. No, there's actually a, a rubric and a design to all this stuff. And they talk about that. They'll also invite you uh, they're encouraged to invite you to committee meetings. So these can be department meetings, they could be academic senate meetings, they could be other committees that they sit on via matriculation. Um, like, what else is there? There's a guided pathways, AB705, all those fun committees that you see, they'll likely invite you to join them in those so you could see uh, the other roles that faculty play, not just uh, in their classroom, but also the commitment they have to the college to sit on these committees and do work outside the classroom uh, for their campus and for the district. Oh, anything else, Bettina? No, I don't think so. I think you got everything. Okay. And we'll take questions at the, oh, yay, we're there. We're at the end. <laughs> I wanted to do it quickly so we have time for questions. And then I, I know a lot of you may be in your cubicles or in your office or you may not be able to ask your questions out loud. So we're checking the chat so you can put your questions in there as well. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> if you want to um, use the raise hand feature, we could definitely uh, see you there. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Christo, for that presentation. I did have a question, actually. Um, who sits on the committee that reviews the applications? That's such a good question. <laughs> well, when I ask for volunteers, <laughs> no, there is a project match committee and um, they, they are notified, but of course there's so many applications. So they get an email and this is a long-standing committee um, of past, uh, sometimes they are past project match alumni who are now full-time faculty members. Um, they have other roles such as in academic senate. Um, so they get an email saying it's time to look at these uh, applications. We also send an email to all past project match faculty mentors. So, so a lot of these faculty mentors, they're, they help us out since day one all the way to the end of this you know, cohort. So they're asked um, the Office of Student Success because that's where the office, uh, where Project Match is coming out of and um, Academic Senate, uh, District Academic Senate. And in fact, um, the District Academic Senate President, uh, Dr. Angela Chavari has been a Project Match mentor for three years now. So it's, so she obviously, she, she tries to get folks to go and, and participate. Uh, but it's usually, in the end, it's people who are familiar with the program and the processes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I had another one. Sure. <laughs> and if anybody else has questions, please jump in. Um, what, in your experience, like what makes an application stand out? I know I've spoken to a couple of um, classified staff members who've applied and for, they weren't sure why they weren't selected when, you know, maybe they had colleagues that were. Um, if you can give us, I know you said the application deadline is March 11th. Um, yes. So is so there- 
Go ahead. Yeah, so I would say um, one is there's only a limited amount of space, right? So that's one thing. Second, again, it has to do with eligibility. You know, don't don't be the person talking about math when we can't let you teach math. Like that's the problem. <laughs> so you want to make sure your eligibility is clear. Mm -hmm. um, but really, if you look at the directions under the how to apply when you get to the Project Match website, it says a letter of interest specifically for the Project Match program. In the letter, include why you are interested in teaching, particularly within LACCD and the communities it serves. Please indicate what discipline you are eligible to teach in the LACCD. Project Match cannot provide equivalency. And then it says about your, you know, your responsibility to make sure that you meet it. Also discuss why and how educational experiences, both at the undergraduate and graduate level, have prepared you to teach at a community college. And I'd have to say that that is, you know, a cover letter, whether it's for Project Match or, you know, a faculty position at any community college or, you know, just higher ed, that letter of interest, that cover letter is so, so important. Okay, all right, so. Okay, I mean, that is, if. to me, like that is, also you need a signed letter of recommendation for Project Match. Mm. I see a lot of them <laughs> for random things. You know, just, just like we do with our students. Sometimes I see some papers that I don't think were for my class, but they sounded good, but I couldn't, I couldn't pass them because they weren't for my class. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like it's, it's one of those things. So you want to really make sure that, you know, and it's someone who's worked with you. So obviously, and that's fine. We, we may even know who signed your letter, but it's, you know, a letter for Project Match, right? Why would you be a, a, a good future instructor, right? Who can talk about that? Who can talk about your relationships with students, how you work with students, how you understand our district, how you understand um, the needs of community college students and why our district, you know, why this area and so forth. So it, it's very specific. And I think um, that sometimes we may get ones that aren't, um, but since there's so many pieces to an application, I can't say why one person got in one didn't unless I look at the application. Uh, there's also then the interview process, right? So then this, if you get through this way, just like with regular faculty positions, then you have to do the interview. Um, and so that's when obviously you just start filtering down a little bit more, but I would really pay attention to everything it's asking you to talk about. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. And I see Joyce has a question. Hi, would those applying to be counseling interns be matched with a counselor or a faculty member? So it's a counselor and counselors are considered faculty within uh, our district and within the state of California, but that's not true in other states. I see a hand. Deirdre? Um, if you've ever taken a position, even if it's just for one semester, are you excluded from this program? You've been, you like, you took it, you had an ad, you were an adjunct for like a semester? Yes. Yes, you are, unfortunately. So if I, if I took an adjunct as a counselor and I want to now become a teacher, can I? No, because counselors are faculty. So in a sense, they are teachers. So even if you didn't teach, but did counseling, because they're considered a faculty position, it is having prior experience. So that's why my application is being. Maybe that's why. <laughs> well, I yeah. wish they would have <laughs> told me. Because um, it's no, and, and it may be that you weren't aware, but yes, counselors are faculty. They are not staff. So even if a counselor is not teaching, then they don't appear to us as teaching faculty. They actually are teaching faculty. Uh, that means they did a teaching demonstration when they got hired. They have to be prepared to teach even if they just are doing counseling hours. So in the state of California, they are faculty. So hence you would have had prior teaching experience. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say, and, and I know Leslie's familiar with this program and I'm trying to get it going again since COVID happened, uh, but we do have the Faculty Teaching and Learning Academy, FTLA, which Project Match does a lot of FTLA stuff, but FTLA is for folks who are faculty, whether they're part-time 
or full-time faculty, but it's also open, open to classified staff and they can use the work that they're doing there and apply it. But because you had experience, maybe you're not teaching right now, but you can apply to FTLA and get a lot of the same information, resources, and teachings as Project Match. And so FTLA always met in person, but as of 2020, we have not come together. Um, and I'm working on figuring out how to do that in, in some type of hybrid way so that we can continue doing uh, back the FTLA program. And FTLA has always been part of the Office of Student Success. Um, it started about 10 years ago. Uh, but we, ha we have been silent because I, I got busy. But I am going to try to bring that back. And um, of course, I'll let Leslie and all you know about that when it's, when it's time. But that is definitely something you can apply to and be part of. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For sure. And Michelle had a question in the chat. She said, uh -huh. you receive a variety of faculty members who represent all disciplines. Um, yes, we do. And um, we've tried it both ways. Sometimes, you know, our faculty apply early and sometimes they don't get a match because there's no one from the cohort that's in that discipline. Um, this year was a little bit easier because we knew the cohort um, very early on because there was less. Usually Project Match will accept 50 to 60 people now that it's a little bit less because it is online. We already knew what disciplines we were looking for. And so although we take applicants from all disciplines of our faculty, we do do a special call out and then we list, you know, really, you know, we need counseling, we need English, we need history, we need poli sci, we need, um, and the list goes on, but it is a variety. It's anything, um, people who apply, I mean, we, and if they're accepted, we will find them a match. So we, we base it off what the applicants need, not like who we have. Okay, got it. Yeah, which sometimes that, that happens in other mentorship programs. Some of them are very specific, like they're just for STEM or it's based on who they have volunteering. If I do that, then I'll be stuck with like the same volunteers <laughs> every year. Did that answer? Okay, great. That answered Michelle's question. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't want to monopolize. I did have another question if nobody else was curious. Um, in your experience, do you think it's possible that to work a full-time classified position and go through the program? Have you seen that happen? I think I have Bettina. Bettina would know. Sorry, we've had, we have had classified staff go through the program even when we had it in person. Mm -hmm. And they've come, they've successfully completed, you know, from start to finish. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them were from um, the district. It was easier when they were from the district building because then they just had to go downstairs at night. <laughs> <laughs> Those people made it on time. Um, but yes, we, we have, and I think, I think being remote uh, has actually opened the door for more uh, staff to apply because a lot of this stuff is on your own time and then meeting with us and like I said is in the evening and on Saturdays for the in-person piece. Thank you. But it, is it is it more work? Yes, but we've all been working so hard, haven't we? Like yeah, yeah. just added to the list at this point. <laughs> oh. Okay. Good. Thank you for that question. Sure, yeah. We have a little bit more time. I don't know if, um... oh, uh, so Allison asked, when will this recording be available? We'll, we'll send it out. Um, it takes a little bit of time for Zoom to, to you know, get the recording finished, but um, Leslie can send it out and we'll also post it to our um, Classified Career Pathways website. And actually, before we end, I just wanted to thank all of the members of the Classified Career Pathways FIG that's here. They helped uh, organize this along with Leslie um, to get Dr. Christo and um, Ms. Valen out uh, to speak with us today. So thank you. I also want to give a shout out to, um, I see a couple of members of our um, Advancing Classified Excellence Mentorship Program. So if you are part of the FIG or if you're part of ACE, can you drop a smiley in the chat or 
wave your hand or give us a thumbs up <laughs> so we can acknowledge you guys. Um, thank awesome. you, yeah. Um, and just so uh, Dr. Christo and Ms. Allen, just so you know, that's, um, we really value mentorships and you know professional relationships. So that's something that we started um, on campus recently. And, um, and so that's part of the reason why we asked you guys here, because we're trying to help classified specifically um, reach their professional and personal goals. Oh, that's awesome. And, you know, our side job that Bettina and I do is we work uh, with 3CSN, which has been providing um, some classified professional learning. We just finished a design lab with the classified group from San Diego Mesa College, and they're going to start up again. So we'll make sure that um, you guys get that information. But those are free professional learning. It's a great networking tool in terms of building relationships, um, because just like faculty and administrators, I mean, staff, we move around, right? And I think sometimes it's great to know of people at other community colleges in other districts, uh, especially if you're looking to apply to another job. Um, but I, I'm really glad that you guys are all holding the space for classified uh, mentorship. I think it's really awesome. And anything that we can do in the 3CSN side, you know, Leslie, you all can contact Bettina because Bettina has been a great leader in that. Uh, for our statewide efforts, uh, which 3CSN is a statewide professional learning grant that we have from the chancellor's office. Uh, we hold it at LACCD as a fiscal agent, but it's for everybody. Okay. Yeah, we will. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I just got an email from San Diego Mesa College and we want to do our classified workshops again. I'm like, all right. You know, and, and those are like, if we actually sold tickets and made money, they would be big sellers, but we don't interest. Oh. <laughs> Most of the people Thank don't do it. <laughs> it's free. Um, <laughs> Let me see. I know I went through project management real quickly. Are there any more questions? I think you guys don't have that many since you guys already work here. I think you understand how those uh, do a lot of them. Yes. So they do. And that's a really good question. And it's hard to report the numbers because they are self-reported. Um, you know, no one comes back to tell you they got a job sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. um, but I actually recently I was on a panel for UCLA on Tuesday. And there was three Project Match alumni there, and they all have full-time jobs at our district. I'm like, y'all didn't tell me, but okay. <laughs> so, but yes, we do. In fact, I'd have to say a good majority of them, by towards the end of the, of the mentorship, you know, we encourage you to apply. We actually have you find a job that you're interested in. We make sure that you apply to it. You know, you have all your, your pieces and I find that by the end, some have already been offered at least an adjunct position, um, if not right afterwards, maybe a semester afterwards. A lot of times those positions are not within our district just because it's obviously, as you know, it's based on budget and hiring, right? And so if we're not hiring that many ad new adjunct faculties, then that's what, um, that's what makes them go to other districts. However, what I have found is that everyone who has gotten a position since we've moved over to the online format has told me that having that certification in online teaching really made the difference because there wasn't really a learning curve because Canvas, which we all use here, is the learning platform for all California community colleges. And in fact, the UC system is about to do the same, make it all Canvas. So when they walk in with a certification from LACCD, the other colleges are like, oh, you have, you know what you're doing then? Like, this isn't new to you. We don't have to train you. We don't have, right? You're ready to go. We can give you an online class. And they said that's made the difference uh, because they're teaching either in a hybrid modality or online. Or during the interview, they were asked what their experiences were with online teaching. And if you go through, so since the pandemic, now when you look at faculty, um, positions, when you go through it, there is now a skill set that says online teaching experience. Mm -hmm. So like that's a desire that they now have that was never there. As someone who's applied to hundreds of jobs, that was never there before. It was like something you wouldn't mention, but that actually being a desire and in some cases a requirement depending on the job you're applying for, having that certification is really important. And so we'll give that to you as part of Project Match, but I know some classified have had the opportunity to just take those online classes anyways. Um, I encourage you to do that. Yeah, I was gonna ask, I, I think, I think classified are allowed to, um, to take that training. I think, have, I think Jesse- I've met some who have. 
yeah i don't know what the and i don't know if it's based on like their position so like the folks that i've met that have done it like let's say um they're in student services and like they're um like eop not eops but like certain services where like they have a canvas shell so you need to know how to like update it and communicate with students like financial aid stuff like that right. um they've taken the certification course but if it is offered to you or if you could just request it from um your supervisor or the distance ed coordinator then i would definitely take those and it's two classes to be certified oh. and they are um asynchronous so they're on your own time they have deadline dates but it's on your time Okay. All right. That's good to know. Maybe we mm -hmm. can talk to our DE coordinator. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Vicki had a, a question in the chat here. Uh, she said, is there any support to prepare for interview and resume building and project match? And yes. Hey, Vicki. I know Vicki. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there is, we do the mock interviews. Um, so we prepare you for the interviews and then we do a mock one where you're, um, online with some faculty members and there's questions and you know you answer them like real interview style we get that's our dress up day you know real interview style um and we also look at your resumes and so you actually submit that all as like assignments and we provide feedback but then when you have your faculty mentor you uh can review that with them as well so both ends you'll get uh feedback but yeah, that's an assignment that we have to take a look at everything that you're submitting. Um, because there is just a format that I think is different, I think for us, like higher ed college jobs versus like, you know, out there private industry type jobs. Right, yeah. You know, the formatting is different. Like I would say like the first thing you have to do is like list all your degrees, like right after your name, because they don't want to search. <laughs> They, they want to know, like, is this person qualified or not? Because if they're not even qualified to teach, we're not even going on with the rest of it. And usually that's, that is someone in this, in a staff role who goes through all that before it even goes to a committee. They look at all that stuff to then tell the committee, okay, these people actually qualify for that faculty position. Because we don't even look at the ones who don't qualify. That is actually a staff person who does that. Mm. So people don't want to search. <laughs> so but yeah we'll definitely go through all that with you and also we'll go through and um if you're not too familiar with it you definitely what what you want to be familiar with is guided pathways implementation you want to be familiar with um other student success policies like ab 705 um just all the stuff coming down from the state a lot of them are state laws that our cha state chancellor office has to put into play. Um, sometimes people think it's from like the district or, you know, it's LA, like, no, it comes from the state and their laws. <laughs> and so you really want to familiarize yourself with what those laws are, you know, what's changing for community college students, um, certain classes that they're now going to have to take um, in diversity, which is really good. Um, but there's a lot of uh, curriculum changes, I guess I, I want to say that you want to be aware of, um, and you can speak to them, right? So these are things that we'll talk about in Project Match, like what you want to mention during your interview, how you want to make the most of your time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a, an incredible program. I hope, um, I hope uh, some of our attendees are able to uh, apply for this cohort or maybe next year, that would be great. I'd love to see some of us go through the program. Yes, yes. So thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it on behalf of the team and I in the Office of Student Success. I really hope you do apply. And of course, encourage your colleagues to apply even outside our district. I'm sure we all have friends and school colleagues that may be interested. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It was nice That's meeting it. you and nice seeing all of you. It was wonderful meeting you as well. If nobody ha else has any questions, I will go ahead and in the uh, meeting and I'll be sure to send out the, um, or Leslie will send out the recording um, to everybody who attended. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.